Hello and welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you are doing well. In this video, we are going to test the driving range of this ID4 Pro. And we will find out how far we can get on one charge. To do that, I'm going to drive from my home about 240 miles to the town of Oakhurst, located just at the bottom of the Yosemite National Park. To make it more interesting or relevant to the real world conditions, to let's say compare that you're traveling with a passenger and a bit of a luggage, I'm going to load this ID4 with a set of rims and tires for a 2012 Volkswagen Touareg. Each wheel and tire combined is a weight of about 70 pounds. Another good benefit of owning an ID4 comparing to let's say a Tesla Model 3, you got a lot more space for less money, so you can load quite a bit of cargo inside of your vehicle. Since in California we do not have flat roads, I'm going to drive 240 miles there charge at 100% and then drive 240 miles back and this way we will have the precise information of how far this guy can go so let's charge it up at 100% and let's see if we can make it first on one charge to Oakhurst and then once we get there hopefully we're going to charge it and see how fast we can charge up to a hundred percent as Volkswagen advertises the charging timing of this ID4 from 5 to 80% in just 36 minutes. Let's find out if that's the case. Hey, and be sure to watch this video all the way to the end to find out what this ID4 can really do on one charge. 250 miles, 260 miles, or maybe 300 miles. You will be pleasantly surprised. Going up the incline and nearly starting the decline, you can tell that I'm still getting about 240 miles of the driving range. Uh, and we have driven 45, so that puts us at 285, but the conditions will only be improving. You can tell the temperature is down to 55, and that will make ID4 batteries feel much better and I definitely do not need to use the air conditioning at this point. My battery usage is at 3.7 miles at this point. That puts me almost at 300 miles of the driving range. The assist driving is working perfect. I set up the ID4 at 71 miles per hour touch and she's going by herself up to 3.8 miles per kilowatt this is the time to completely and absolutely relax on your drive on a stretch like that we are on the 99 moving up north the driving experience in this ID4 is so relaxing and so comfortable to the point that especially with this foggy conditions outside today I'm about to fall asleep it's just absolutely amazing on a long drive how well this vehicle serves I never sacrificed anything on the way up at all so it's been always driving just uh, a couple miles above the speed limit in other words i never had to lag behind or milk the range out of the vehicle i just drove at a normal speed uh, within the limit within the traffic conditions uh, not to be a pain in the butt for anybody around me all right so 5.3 miles left uh, id4 is showing nine percent 18 miles left on the range 226 miles into the trip. It would be fair to say that 250 miles of range we got. And here are the chargers. 
So I was down to 8% and I would need to charge all the way up to 100% again. As of right now, my charging time is estimated to be 55 minutes. Let's see how it goes, kind of slow, five miles per minute. 80%, we started at seven or 8% and it took 35 minutes. All right, so here is the set that I got for our Civic project. Everything worked out well. These are much lighter actually, comparing to the Turek wheels. Nevertheless, still weight, still load, and they take space. At 98%, and the time is 2.31. So it's going to be actually an hour to completely charge the ID4. It's ready to go, 99. So success all the way around, 59 minutes, 99%. 59 minutes so that's 90% in one hour so on the way here what did I find out I think the ID4 was being conservative in the amount of miles it was showing me a left on the driving range and the reason is because my consumption or my battery usage was only 3.2 miles per kilowatt and when i did the math 82 kilowatt battery multiplied by 3.2 i got 262 miles of the driving range but because my last stretch of the drive was so inconsistent well actually consistent with the incline i think the vehicle was estimating that i am going to drive in the same well under the same conditions through the rest of my journey and that's why it was dropping down in terms of the miles estimated left 60 minutes i have 265 miles of the range now let's see how the id4 will do it on the way back so this is exactly what i've been telling you on the way up to my destination as you can tell my regeneration is going quite well. Usage of the battery is going up, is improving, up to 3.3 now. So hopefully by the time we get home, this number will be even better and we can get closer to 260 miles of the range as advertised by the Volkswagen. But again, as we did the math at the charging station, it looks like we are right on the money so hopefully that's going to be the case. And thankfully the weather conditions were great today to perform such a test. So as of right now I'm coming back and the weather, the temperature is still at 59 and it's cloudy, which is nice. I'm not getting tired. The batteries are not being overheated. And also what I would like to mention that once the charging was done, the battery was not it was not needed to be cooled anymore so when i left the charging station the battery was at adequate temperature which is great especially when you drive so that the fan and the cooling system is not consuming the battery plus when the battery is at the proper temperature it just performs better the usage is right on the spot so on the way back, I'm driving here and I'm thinking, do you really need a longer than, let's say, 260 mile range? And even here, living in California, of course, if we are considering Texas or North Dakota or Wyoming or Alaska, it's a different world. I cannot even speak for you guys, but if you live in California, Florida, Oregon, or Washington state, here's what I'm thinking. And I will compare it to California. So I live just about 30 miles north of downtown LA. And I can reach, let's say, San Diego, 
without any problems. And then at my destination with about 20 minute charge up, I would be able to make it back home. Not a big deal, not an issue at all. Then I'm thinking, so today I pretty much went to Yosemite National Park. And yes, I could have gone to that once, get my grocery shopping done, charge up my vehicle and then still do my round around Yosemite National Park for the next few days at 260 miles of the range and then get back home without any issues. So then even driving up to let's say San Francisco from LA I could make to a charging station and with about 20 to 30 minutes charge up I could make to my destination again San Francisco or Sacramento so I'm thinking do I really need like other vehicles are claiming 500 mile range or 300 mile range and I'm thinking not because this 260 seems to be the optimal and here's why because your charging time that is what matters so even if you're driving somewhere, let's say, far, far away, right? You decided to drive from LA to Oklahoma City. So if you will use your 500 mile range, then you will have to be charging. So to charge this vehicle completely took me one hour. Now, if you will have to charge your 500 mile range, that means it will take you two hours. Is that really that good of a trade-off? Because here, yes, I could drive, so 260 miles divided by 80, let's say three, three and a half hours, and then stop, charge, have a break, and then keep going. Whereas with 500 mile range, even on a long trip, you cannot drive 500 miles without stops, so you will have still a stop for, like a pit stop, right? And then later on, you'll have to stop for a long period of time because now you will need two hours to charge your vehicle. Or you would be still doing what I'm doing here. And I'm thinking 260 mile range is all we need. And if we are driving home on an everyday basis and we can charge at our house, then you don't even need 260. Definitely do not need 500. And another point, what will happen when these batteries will get useless, you know? Everything has its life expectancy. So everything is going to, at some point, deteriorate and will be thrown away. In our case, we will have half of the batteries comparing to what's in the 500 mile vehicle, 500 range. 500 mile range vehicle so there we have it unless once we get to a technology that we will be able either to have more efficient motors that will be consuming less battery power or the batteries will be more powerful that at the same capacity or the same size they will be able to produce just or give us more but for now I believe 260 miles of the range is all we need. Please follow the road for 49 miles. Going up the grapevine, the consumption is 0 0.8, 0 0.9 miles per kilowatt. ID4 is freaking out and just told me that based on the current power consumption, the destination has been added to my route. It's been concerned that I will not make it home at a charging station to my route. But it will improve. Already up to 1.1. It's gonna flatten out and then we'll be doing downgrade towards my town. But as of right now, yes, the power consumption is the highest. You know what's crazy, or different, I guess you would say, 
when you drive an EV over an overpass like Grapevine that you do not sense that the vehicle is struggling or working harder. All you need to do is to watch the power consumption. Other than that, there is still plenty of space under my foot. I'm not flooring the acceleration at all. And the car is just going. It's quiet in here. Uh, the same conditions, the same everything. Uh, effortless, absolutely. So what's important is that you're watching this. The amount of miles you're getting per kilowatt. Other than that, it's a totally different experience comparing to driving an internal combustion engine. Along the way goes another great element of driving an EV on a long journey is I don't need to apply brakes at all. And it's not only to wear and tear your brake pads and your brake discs, but it's also just not having the stress of trying to brake. All I'm doing is playing with an accelerator or the gas pedal and the vehicle goes and it's just a lot more pleasing in terms of the physical dynamics and the experience of the drive. So I'm just a few miles away from home and here is the usage of the battery, 3.7 miles per kilowatt, 226 miles driven. 61 miles per hour average speed and well showing 98 miles left left onto copper hill drive uh, by the way here is how id4 is letting you know that you need to turn left with a little led running light uh, above the dash please follow the road for four miles she's very pleasant to us back home ID4 is showing 88 miles left. And these are the stats for the way back. On the following day, my total driving range is 240 miles. The ID4 is still showing that I got 82 miles left. Now, how accurate this is, I'll, I'll let you to decide because today. I've driven 8 miles at 6.1 kilowatt. Like I said, I'm very careful in town. Not careful, but I just know how to use an EV in town. And according to ID4, I could get easily on the last charge over 300 miles. I think that's pretty cool. And that sums it all. This vehicle is very economical. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it or it will be helpful to you or somehow relevant to what you're doing. If that's the case, please don't forget to like it, share it with someone you know and subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye.